Hey now, folks. So in the wake of Dominion and the huge crater that it left in the gaming landscape that led to the birth of the deck building genre, probably no, shall we say, clone of Dominion was more popular and more ever present than Ascension Chronicle of the God Slayer, which is designed by Justin Gary. It's probably the one that's most known among board gaming circles, uh, aside from Dominion, that's in the deck building genre. It spawned many expansions. It's very popular. It's got, you know, tournament scene, everything like that. It has, the designers of the game were actually uh, former Magic Pro players, so it came with a little bit of street cred when it first came out. And it really was the first major deck builder. I think uh, Arctic Scavengers might have been the very first deck builder to come out after Dominion, I mean, but this is the one that really became popular right away. And the, this has definitely has much more theme than Dominion. Uh, in this game, you basically, everyone is a like awesome demigod type hero who is controlling a force of heroes and constructs to try and defeat these demonic forces led by this fallen demon called Samael. And I don't know why, but you're all competing against each other to see who gets the right to defeat him. You would think they would all just team up, but this is not a cooperative game. Uh, so... This adds some new things that Dominion did not have, like an extra type of currency, so to speak, in the form of power. You have runes, which are basically like uh, like uh, currency to buy heroes, but then you have power, which you use to actually defeat monsters, which are another new thing. And this also added the concept of the cha ever-changing lineup of buyable cards. In Dominion, you randomly choose certain stacks of cards at the beginning of the game, and that's all you have to choose from for the for the remainder of the game, and when those run out, the game will end. In this one, you're actually playing until a pool of victory points run out, and there's a center deck that will randomly change a lineup of cards, that you're, so you always have different things to buy from. So it added a lot of randomness to the game. Is that good, is that bad? If you've never played Ascension before, stay tuned. I'm gonna give you an overview, and we're gonna come back, and I'll let you know what I think. All right, I'm just gonna give you a brief overview of Ascension if you've never played the game before, just to give you an idea of whether it's your cup of tea or not. So let's go over the game board first. I should mention that the board is actually kind of superfluous to the game. You don't need it, but it's very handy for remembering where everything goes and keeping track of things. Now there's this little pool of tokens up here. These are honor tokens, which are essentially your victory points for the game. They come in fives, which are the reds, and ones, which are the little white ones, or clear ones, and Basically, you're gonna gain those during the course of the game. Whenever that pool runs out, you're gonna finish the current round with the last player so everyone has an equal amount of turns during the course of the game. And then you're gonna stop and you're gonna add up all of your points. Whoever has the most points is the winner. Now you could actually gain more honor than that in the last round if you need to. You'll just take the rest of them from the box because there's only a certain amount of honor there according to the number of players in the game. But if you need more in the last round, you'll take it from the box and then the game is still gonna end whenever the last player goes. Now, the most important part of this board is this center deck here. This is actually called the portal deck. This is where all the cards that you're going to be able to purchase on your turn come from. They're going to, there's randomly shuffled, and then you put out six at the beginning of the game. Whenever someone purchases or defeats a monster in the center row, uh, they're going to either, if it's a monster, they'll put it into the void, which is the banishment pile. I'll get to that in a second. If it's, any, if it's a hero or a construct, they're going to take it into their deck. Then they immediately replace that card from the center deck so you always have six available to purchase from and in fact they, you can therefore go ahead and continue your turn if you have more points you can get or destroy more cards but that is basically that so right next to it like i said is the void deck or the void pile that's where cards that are banished go now there's two different terminologies and the two terms in this game that are very important destroy and banish if a card is destroyed it's going to go into the discard pile of whoever owned that card if a card is banished it's going to go into the void and the only, unless you have a funky card that's going to bring a card back from the void, it's usually gone for good. Monsters always go to the void, again, unless something special is going on. And some cards will let you purposefully banish cards from your deck, which is something you might actually want to do to get rid of some crappy cards that are clogging up your deck, because this is a deck building game. Over off to the side here, we have three constant cards that are almost always going to be available to purchase or defeat. You have a cultist who is basically a monster, and even though there's only one card out there, he's basically infinite. You can, if you have the power and nothing else to spend it on, you can defeat him over and over again. Everyone can do it on their turn. Then you have heavy infantry, which give you power, and mystics, which give you runes. I'll get back to those in a minute, but 
uh, there are a lot of Mystics and Heavy Infantry. I've never seen either deck run out. Uh, they're not infinite, but basically they should always be available to purchase. And the last thing on the board is Little Turn Summary, which you're probably not going to need after the first couple of turns. Your turns are very simple and very quick. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the actual cards of the game and what they do and how to play. So at the beginning of the game, every player is going to start off with the same starting deck of 10 cards. In that deck, you have eight apprentices, apprentices, apprentici, apprentices, let's go with that, uh, that all they do is give you plus one rune. Now, runes are the currency of this game, which you're going to use to either buy constructs and or heroes. You can buy as many cards as you want from the center lineup, but you need the currency to do so. But there are other things in the lineup called monsters. In order, to, and instead of buying monsters, you're gonna be defeating them. In order to do that, to do that, you need power. And that's what militia do. You have two militia cards in your starting hand of 10 cards, starting deck of 10 cards, and each one gives you plus one power. Now, on your turn, you're basically gonna play, you, you'll shuffle these cards and draw five at the end of your turn. You'll draw five at the beginning as well. And of those five cards that you have, you can basically just play all of them out on the table and add up how many runes and how many power you have total. And that's what you're gonna use to either buy or defeat the cards in the center lineup. Whenever you buy a hero or a construct, it goes into your discard pile. And whenever you defeat a monster, it goes into the banishment pile, the void, and you're gonna usually gain points for that card, which is taken from the honor token pool. But like any other deck builder, when you buy heroes and constructs, by them going into your discard pile, when you eventually run out of these 10 cards, you'll reshuffle all of your cards together with your discard pile, which means that when you draw five cards again, it's likely that you're gonna draw the cards that you bought. And that's what, how a deck building game works. That's how you're gonna strengthen your deck and get better cards. Let's look at some of the other cards you can actually purchase. There are basically three main types of cards. The first are heroes. Heroes are basically uh, just people that you put into your deck that are going to help you. You'll play them the same as your apprentices and as your militia, and in fact they're called heroes too, but they usually have much better effects. Now this is just a lifebound initiate, and she's not too powerful, but she is better than your starting cards. So up in the top corner you have the cost of the card. If she was in the center lineup, you would need at least one rune to purchase her. So if you have that rune, you'll spend it and you'll put her into your discard pile. Here we have the fact that she's a hero and also what type of hero. There are four factions in the game and she is from the lifebound faction. Lifebound faction is usually about gaining more runes and gaining uh, honor points. And in fact, that's what you see here. When you play her, you, have the, you can gain a rune and an honor point. You'll basically take an honor point from the center pool. Now down here, you see the honor to icon again saying one. But this doesn't mean that you're going to take one from the bank. This instead means that this card, by mere virtue of it being in your deck, is worth one honor point. So at the end of the game, you will count her as a point. Now, another type of card are constructs. And they kind of function the same way when you're purchasing them. Here's the cost of the one. This one costs five, which is a lot more. Here it says that it's a construct, and this is from the Void Faction. Uh, the Void Faction is usually about destroying things and banishing things, including banishing cards from your own deck, which could be a benefit for you if you need to. Uh, and you see, The way that constructs work, however, as opposed to heroes, is that when you play a hero, it's going to go into your discard pile at the end of your turn once it's used up. Constructs, once they're played, after you've bought them and they show up in your hand and you play them, are going to stay in play and give, usually give you a constant effect. For instance, this one, which is the Void Thirster, says once per turn, you can gain a power, which is really nice. That just basically means you're going to have an automatic one power every turn, so long as the construct stays in play. It also says the first time you de defeat a monster in the center row each turn, you gain another honor, in addition to whatever honor you would gain for killing that monster. So constructs can be quite nice. The third type of card, however, are monsters. Now you see up in the top corner, instead of runes, you have the power symbol. This is how much power you must have on your turn to defeat this monster, the Corrosive Widow. When you have enough to defeat it on your turn, if it's in the center row, you'll basically just put it into the void pile and you'll gain whatever the effect is down here, which is the reward. The reward now for the Corrosive Widow is you gain three honor and each opponent must put a construct he controls into his discard pile. So this is how the player interaction in this game basically works. What little player interaction there is, uh, is basically that you can just def sometimes defeat some of your opponent's constructs. And that happens as soon as you defeat the Corrosive Widow. 
So that's the basic cards of the game. And let me just show you a couple examples from the other factions. Uh, this is uh, You notice that all the different factions have different colored borders. That's the easiest way to tell them apart. The, the Enlightened faction has this blue border. And Enlightened cards usually have to do with drawing cards, basically stuff with knowledge. Drawing cards and getting better hand advantage and center row advantage. Um, and you see here, he's another hero, cost five. When you play him, you'll get to draw two cards. Um, and he's worth two honor points when he's in your deck. Uh, this is an example of a construct from the Mechana faction. Now, the Mechana faction is interesting in that the Mechana cards combo off of each other, and they usually give you bonuses for having more Mechana cards in play. So, for example, this construct says that once per turn, you gain a rune. You may spend it only to acquire a Mechana construct. So, obviously, with Mechana constructs, you want to get more and more similar Mechana cards. So, that's an interesting faction there. So now that I've given you an example of the cards, I'll give you an example of how the game actually plays turn by turn. So it's my turn. I have my starting deck. I'm going to take five cards at random. And let's see. I have four apprentices and one militia. Now, the one militia isn't going to be enough to do much of anything. There is this cultist card, which can always be killed with two power and you gain one point, but it takes two power. So, And there's no other monster in the center row that is only one power to kill. So that militia card is going to be wasted. But I'll put down my other four apprentices because they're going to give me a total of four runes. And with those, I actually have several options. Now, there is the Avatar Golem, the Yggdrasil Staff, and the Arha Templar, uh, which are constructs and heroes, which all cost four. So I can buy any one of those. Alternatively, I can buy a Mystic, which is an always available card, which is like a much better form of the Apprentice. It costs three, but it gives me two runes when I play it, and it is actually worth a victory point. The, the Heavy Infantry is like a much better version of the Militia, which is because it gives me two power and it's worth a victory point and it only costs two. So I could actually buy two Heavy Infantry. But you know what? I really, really like the Yggdrasil Staff, which is a construct that's going to stay in play when I play it. It's worth two points, and every turn I gain a power, and I can actually spend runes on my turn to gain Renown or Honor, which is really, really great. But let's see. I'm going to buy that. It goes into my discard pile uh, next to my other cards, and... That's that. Now, once I buy a card, it's immediately replaced with another card from the center row. Now I got a runic lycanthrope. Now it's going to go to the next player. So now the next player has different options. The runic, the Yggdrasil staff is gone, but the runic lycanthrope is there. And that's a good card too, and it's cheaper. So this is basically how the game is going to go. Now let's say I do eventually have enough power. Let's say that I bought a heavy infantry and I draw another militia when my turn comes back around or one of my opponents does. And that's enough power to... Three power is enough to defeat this method here. And it says that when I defeat the method, I gain two honor or renown and I can banish a card in the center row. So I'll do that. Another card comes out right away. I'll go ahead and take my two victory points, my honor or renown, whatever you want to call it. And let's see, I want to banish a card. Well, uh, I think my opponent's going to want to buy this Runic Lycanthrope, so I'll go ahead and banish that and see what else comes out. All right, and maybe I have enough to buy something else. Maybe I have enough to defeat something else. Who knows? But you can defeat as many cards as you have the currency for. You can buy as many cards as you have the currency for. And when you're done, you'll discard everything, draw five again, play goes to the next person. That's Ascension. All right, so that's Ascension, and clone it may be, but nevertheless, when I play Ascension, I have a completely different feeling and a completely different gameplay experience than when I play Dominion. And it's not just because of the theme, which honestly, the theme is not all that strong with this game, but it's just having that uh, starting lineup that's constantly changing as you buy cards and new ones come out, and also having two different types of currency and being, you know, deciding, having more choices about how you want to go. It's not all about just getting those combos and setting off combos to get the estates and duchies from dominion it's about okay do i want to set up an engine of let's see, maybe uh, the mechanic constructs and get those going to, and just buying cards that have really high points do i want to go for monsters and there's always the chance that one of those methods is not going to work out very well for you if those cards that you need don't come out in the lineup if you're all about power and you've got a lot of cards with have power in your deck 
then you might get screwed if you don't have a lot of monsters in the starting lineup on one of your turns and vice versa you may have a lot of mystics in your deck you may have a lot of other cards that give you a lot of runes and then all of a sudden boom nothing but monsters so actually how you look at that is going to uh, color how you actually think about this game is that a positive or a negative for you that randomness for me i'm going to say that overall it's a positive but it definitely it is a drawback to the game and i can understand why some people will not like that where dominion is the card game for euro gamers this is definitely the card game for ameritrash lovers because it, you know if you want to look at ameritrash as a pejorative i personally don't but that's because that randomness for me it makes the game for others is going to ruin the game and to be sure i've been frustrated at times when i'm doing all power i've got a lot of heavy infantry in my deck i got a lot of other here unique heroes that give me a lot of power and nothing but rune cards out or vice versa there's not you know there's not a single rune card out and there's nothing but monsters that cost a lot to kill and all i got are those two stinking militia still in my deck that aren't going to do anything for me so you know there are ways around that but it delays your turn so that can be frustrating for some people not being able to have a set strategy in place because you never know what's going to come out in that lineup but on the other hand i always felt like there was something to do if i had extra power i could always kill that cultist if i had runes i didn't know what to spend them on it's not always a bad idea to take a mystic or heavy infantry yeah they kind of clog your deck but they're also worth victory points and i like that too i like that every card except with the exception of your starting cards are worth victory points so you know you feel like you're at least progressing so you have something to do on your turn that's not always the case with dominion sometimes it's all about just getting that engine going and if you don't do it fast enough people are going to buy those uh, different victory point cards out from under you that can't really happen in ascension although it is possible in another fault of this game to have a runaway leader someone who gets their engine in ascension going very well especially with mechanic constructs and especially with the expansions that come out but nevertheless uh, once someone gets their engine going very well they can definitely score a ton of points and just be far and away the leader but uh, you know I still think that overall the game is a solid game i have to i can't okay i can't let this go without commenting on the art now it should all be about the gameplay and the mechanics and yes i i do think that's solid the artwork for this game is awful <laughs> there's a lot of people that defend it as being unique and it's certainly unique as a pair compared to a lot of other artwork and board and card games that i have but it's just terrible and throughout the other expansions that have come out and i'll get to those eventually uh, it stays pretty awful. It's gotten somewhat better recently, but I don't know. This is what happens when you try to do artwork on the cheap and you have a friend who is willing to do it for cheap in-house. You don't, because artwork can be very expensive if you have to shop it out, but this is the downside to <laughs> doing it on the cheap. It's just awful artwork. And that's part of the reason why the theme doesn't come across to me as well, because it's a deck builder. You know, you don't have a lot to work with when you're trying to make a theme. So you have to go with the art and they really drop the ball in this instance. Also, I should mention that now I personally have one of the first printings of this game. They did a horrible job cutting the cards. I, I work in the printing industry, so I know what a you know a crap job looks like. And the cards, you know, when you stack them up next to each other, they're not even even. And you know, you have to be counting cards for it to actually affect gameplay, but it does make shuffling bad. I hate the plastic cards. Some people love plastic cards. I can't stand them, so it makes shuffling bad, especially when you get more expansions. So this game has a lot of cosmetic flaws if that really bothers you a lot if it's the tipping point for you but nevertheless i think as deck builders go this is one of the strong ones it doesn't see as much play in my group as late because other ones that have a much better theme like legendary and um, shadow rift see more play in my group but nevertheless every now and then i have a hankering for ascension because i love how fast it is i love the different types of currency, the starting lineup, which no other game with a starting lineup has been able to do better, even Legendary, I would say. So it's a solid game. I think that if you really love deck builders and you haven't gotten around to this one yet, please do so and start with the base set. Why not? There's other expansions that are very good, but the base set has everything that you need and you could probably get it for cheap at this point. So that's Ascension Chronicle of the Gods Slayer from Gary Games, designed by Justin Gary. Uh, my name is Nick. This has been Board Game Brawl, reminding you to get out there and game every day and every way. Take care.